These are good ones. Low ceiling, inconsistent on short throws, arm strength not elite enough for his size. This is interesting because the inconsistent on short throws, I could see that, but I could also see where some of his short throws were the best part of his game, mm -hmm. at least early on. But I could also see what he's talking about. We, yeah. we saw in the Lions game. We've seen that pop up. Arm strength not elite enough for his size. I could see it because yeah. if you're talking about the early part, absolutely. But mm -hmm. then you talk about the Jets and the Browns and that type of stuff. I know it looks like he does have arm strength. Yeah. He just wasn't utilizing it enough. So that's a good one. Low ceiling is interesting to me. That's mm -hmm. the interesting one because what is his ceiling? Is his ceiling just Jimmy G? I mean, that's not a low ceiling. Like people disrespect that. Like that's not a low ceiling. It's not. It's not. It's not the type of guy that we're used to. I'll just put no, it no, that no. Way. What you're used to is one thing, but we're comparing a Hall of Famer to what the league average is and trying to put Jimmy G as a league average quarterback solely because he's not a Hall of Famer. To me, that's a Pittsburgh flaw. Pittsburgh people do that a lot, and I get it. Dude, we've but only had a franchise quarterback. At least people my age. I know. Like, well, we've that's, only and that's why had I don't fault guy. you. That's why I don't fault you, but you'll see. Like the the, the slam. I hope Jimmy we don't G have to see. Like that, I hope we don't have to see, dude. I can't do it. I can't do some of the stuff that you were talking about up in well, Buffalo. I'll asking, go crazy. I, I already had the 2019 so, season. So then, who's our? We went crazy. So who's the Hall of Fame quarterback that's walking in the door then for this season? Because if you do not have a Hall of Fame quarterback, that is what it looks. If that, it looks like how this year looked, that's what it looks like. Is inconsistent. Is flashes. Is can you do it for four quarters? That's what it looks like, man. Jimmy G ain't down that far. Don't, don't, no, 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 don't, don't slander Jimmy. If Jimmy G was here right now, I don't think we're singing these tunes the way we're talking about Mason and Haskins and those guys. That's all I'm saying, bro. Uh, we have Jimmy G. Mm -hmm. That's so all I'm saying. We bro. actually really like Jimmy G, is what you're saying. You, you'll find out. It's cool. When, when, when we see Mason or Haskins or Dobbs or whoever comes in here take a team to a Super Bowl, when we see that, then we can make the case that they're better than Jimmy G. But we have not seen. Oh that. no, no one's Jimmy, making that case. No, well, no, no, no but, but you're is, talking but, about ceiling. Yeah, because like when we talk about Jimmy G, it's always a negative connotation when yeah. we're referring to him. And to me, I'm like Jimmy G is still a day going really good quarterback. Is he a Hall of Famer? No. But when we talk Hall of Famers, as we've broken down, it's seven quarterbacks that we feel legitimately above reproach are franchise caliber or future Hall of Fame caliber quarterbacks. And then after that, it's going to get real dice when you start trying to make a list of 10 guys. So with that being said, you're not always going to have that. But Jimmy G is day going closer to that next tier than he is the bottom tier. And that's all I'm saying. I'll with give Jimmy you with G. that. I'll, I'll definitely... I don't know what to make of that ceiling, though, if it's just Jimmy G. Oh, so going to a Super Bowl isn't a good ceiling. All right, that's fine. That's cool. That's cool. So what's a good ceiling for you, then, if it's not going to a Super Bowl? Because I mean, that's what Jimmy G has done. Like I said, you I look at You look at the, the wins. Guy. You look at the statistics. You look at what Jimmy G has accumulated. You tell me if, if that's considered a bad – is that a bad ceiling? Because that's a bad ceiling, it. man. We're gonna have a lot of guys falling short, baby. This is gonna be tough for me, dude. Yeah, you have to. I be about patient. to say it, you have to be patient. Yeah, for I would say if you, if you go put if you go put that there, Jimmy G done went multiple times in the playoffs as well. Not as the big dog either, as underdog. Like that's all I'm saying, man. If we if we saying Jimmy G is the bad, is that if that's the baseline, bro? It's a lot of quarterbacks we're gonna be really pissed off with, man. Probably, yeah, probably. Because Jimmy, like I said, he didn't take you to a Super Bowl. He didn't won multiple playoff games. Probably, dude. Yeah. It just feels like settling in a way. All right. But that's why I talked so highly on Ben when everyone wanted to throw him out the door. It's like, dude, these Hall of Fame franchise quarterbacks don't come around. No, 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 no. But the, the difference was. Because the, the only way but, only way is like you got to trade out the ass no, or no, no. I hear get lucky with saying. your draft pick. I hear what you're saying. But when people started talking about Ben, it was because his play started to fall from Hall of Fame level and look more in that Jimmy G level where you're asking yourself, well, how consistent is it? Is this more of a flash? Is this more week to week? That's why people started saying that about seven. Nobody was saying that about seven when he was doing what seven does consistently for four quarters. That wasn't the case. I've seen enough this season of seven doing what he does to know that Canada hijacked these first halves and everything. That Vikings game, you can't tell me. Aye. You can't tell me. Still didn't have it in the tank. You can't tell me.
That was a month ago. All I'm saying is if if Jimmy G is what you don't want, then I ain't want that seven version either. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, huh? you remember I'll, t- I'll take seven back with like Todd Haley and like a good coordinator. Oh, now and, you want to go in the past? We're not talking about the past. We talk about right no, now. No, no, I'm just saying a good. Past, co- I'm saying a good coordinator. I'll take yeah. seven with a good coordinator and a revamped offensive yeah. line for sure going yeah, into yeah. next year. I mean, I hear you, I hear you. Jimmy. Uh, low ceiling. I don't know. I, I I don't know what low ceiling is. Low ceiling to me. I told you, I'm so black and white with this. Where it's just like yeah. you're either you're either the guy that I think mm-hmm. can lead us to the Super Bowl. You're the guy that I think you can win mm-hmm. trust. The franchise guy. You're either that or you're not yeah. for the most part. Because outside of the franchise guys, we've had two outlier scenarios and Joe mm-hmm. Flacco who just played amazingly for okay. four playoff games. And then Nick Foles, who did the same. Yeah. But those are just like you you're not expecting that going into a well, season. In terms That's of just like, lucky. Hold on, hold on. What what are you what are you saying right here? Like Joe Flacco played like a Hall of Fame franchise quarterback for four games in a playoff. Yes, but at the same Nick time, did as well. but no, no, no. But this is the thing. Like, I think those are different because Joe Flacco was already still a starting quarterback. Joe Flacco, to me, was very much like a Jimmy G in the sense of had won, had had success, but the question was, could he go on a postseason run? Could he go from really good to elite? That I don't w- think Jimmy G could ever do what Flacco did, though. Well, Flacco at least dude, had the talent, the arm, and stuff. He was one throw away. Think about it. He was literally he was. one throw away from winning the Super Bowl. So we cannot That's the sit unfortunate here and thing act with like the that. Sports, it just yeah. is, but, and that's perfect. But the fact that we try to account, and so we're essentially going to say one throw is the biggest reason why we don't trust him. To me, I think that's a little bit, you know, not the best mentality, but I can understand the approach. To me, I think with Nick Foles, it was different because he wasn't a full year starter. When he came in and won that Super Bowl, the groundwork was already laid. Carson Wentz did most of the work that season. He came in with last two regular season games and then postseason he had his run. To me, that's extremely small. I don't feel as confident going with that as I would with the Joe Flacco, which is why I said the Jimmy G and Joe Flacco I thought were similar because they both had won a lot. They both have started multiple games and started that season from the beginning. And then it was just the surprise element of, can they actually do this? Are they really doing this? Oh, dang on that boy. Joe Flacco actually won one. This is nuts. Like that type of feeling. Whereas with Nick, I don't like if Nick would have been a starter from week one, I don't think I personally don't think they win it. I don't think that it plays out like that. You know what I mean? Like, that's the difference to me with those situations. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about. Those guys are outliers. Because yeah. think of all the guys that have won Super Bowls, uh, franchise QBs. Those are the outliers. And Flacco <sighs> played like, like Jimmy G did not oh, play like man. Flacco. Flacco sure played we, unreal I'm in those sure playoffs. I'm sure if we go back and look. Oh, if you want to go to the 80s and saying, 90s, yeah, yeah. sure, but no, no, sure. No, I'm saying even in the 2000s. Like, I know Brady Brad Johnson, gets a ton of that's it. That's probably it. I'm telling you, dude, because it was, I mean, it was Ben, like Manning. I mean, that's early 2000. I'm saying, it's like, for me, it's, for me, from like 03, 03, 04, all the way up until now, Mm -hmm. it's basically been the franchise guys outside of Flacco and Fools. Okay. And Flacco had one of the greatest, like, playoff Mm -hmm. runs ever for a quarterback. And Nick Mm -hmm. Fools, I mean, he played on real, too. So that's the thing. I just don't know if Jimmy G has that type of potential to elevate the team because he made it to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. What? Throwing eighty yards in like the yeah. NFC Championship game, and that team was awesome around him. But we're not going to act like he still didn't do stuff throughout that season. That's no, 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 that was saying. a really yeah. good season for him, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. Yeah, he missed out on. Op- it's kind of like Jared Goff too. He missed out on yeah, an opportunity yeah, there. One. Absolutely, yeah. he's another prime example of like a guy that we don't view as elite, but you know, if he plays a little bit better, hit a throw here or there, that's a difference for them in that game. Now, I do feel way more confident in Jimmy G if he would have got another chance to make a throw, making that throw versus. Jared Goff just waking up and be a better player in the Super Bowl. I don't feel like that. I thought what New England's approach was exposed Jared Goff in the, yeah. the cheating system that they had. And that's what I was telling you. It's like, yo, he had a helper out there the whole time. Whereas at least with Jimmy G, it's like, man, he has to do this by himself. He's not having a coach tell him, all right, Dan, this. All right, look, look to the right, but you're going to throw a left. All right, go and stop the ball right now. I'm like, bro, you're cheating. You can't do that. You know what I mean? So now that that's been exposed, he ain't looked the same since then, man. 